Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Augmented Reality and Recruiting with Lisa Hu. Lisa currently oversees enterprise and operations at Blipper and uh, has been leading efforts to bring augmented reality and computer vision to the mainstream by helping enterprises and brands connect the physical world with the digital through interactive experiences. Please give a warm welcome to Lisa Hu. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, hope you had a good lunch. Um, so I guess I just have a question. Um, how many people have heard about or know what AR is? Okay. Because I asked the same question about six years ago um, in 2012, and it was funny, only one or two people raised their hands. And it's amazing how much AR has evolved over the years. And while it's still pretty nascent, um, there's definitely more awareness going on. And there's an ecosystem of many AR players out there. Um, so for me, I, um, I'm at Blipper, which we started in 2011 in the UK. And um, really, from our side of Blipper, which is one of many players in this ecosystem, um, you know, we've been, for us, our whole mission is about digitizing this world out there. So it's really about, um, there's two pillars at Blipper. It's the visual recognition part to it. So using computer vision, AI, deep learning to identify real world objects in the world. But then the second pillar, which is um, the augmented reality piece. And it's okay if that's off. <laughs> it's just a title slide. Um, the AR part. So this is really about upon pointing to the physical world, any objects out there, what's the digital content that you can get from it? Um, you know, and the content that you have out there um, is, is pretty limitless. So I will show you certain examples. But we started in 2011 at Blipper. And um, again, our whole mission is really about giving people the, uh, more of the world that they see around them. So everything you see in front of you right now, even in this conference room, it's at face value, whether you see that chair or person next to you or certain collateral, you know, the brochures. But the whole point of AR is to add a digital layer on top of it. And there's so much more that you can get um, beyond that physical object that you see. And, um, you know, over time, so originally, you know, we worked, we actually jumped right into working with major CPG brands, retailers, ad agencies, publishers, and they're really exploring the idea of um, being able to turn on their worlds with digital content. And if we fast forward to today, it's really amazing how, um, how many use cases um, are occurring across many different industry verticals, whether it is the retailer wanting to increase uh, shopper engagement or whether it is you know, a cereal brand wanting to drive up engagement off their cereal boxes for kids, um, whether it's an entertainment company wanting to you know, show AR entertainment content, or even um, workplace training, having a lot of companies want, wanting to use visual learning to train employees or in classrooms. And then, you know, in this case, having recruiting companies try to capitalize on the recruiting process by infusing AR and technology in it. So we've come a long way, and there's been a lot of insights we've collected. I'm going to first show you a general video and then show you actual examples of, of um, what we've done. So. And by the way, the audio is not working. There's always something in tech that doesn't work, ironically. But um, that's OK. I'll just talk over it. Um, <laughs> so this is where there's nice music, but you can't hear it. Um, but basically, you know, this is just showing different examples how we worked in auto brands, major serial brands. Um, and you know, for them, they had different objectives of what type of content they wanted to um, they wanted their users to obtain upon pointing to certain markers. Um, and the markers, whether they are print ads or um, objects around them, um, bottles, et cetera. And you know, a lot of times, um, well, the fun challenge we have is that there's so much content that you can display. It's more about, well, what is it that you want to achieve um, you know, from the experience? And what is going to drive up that consumer engagement or shopper or reader engagement? Um, um, there's use cases around e -co instant commerce where you could just point and buy instantly, virtual try on, um, obtaining information. And you know, it could be a simple activation or it could be a complex one. Uh, but really, it's, it's really tying into um, you know, the, the engagement piece to it. So I'm going to show you some real examples 
and uh, that we've done with many brands. We've worked with thousands of brands, tier one, two, three. We've seen what works, what doesn't work. Um, but you know, over time, it's, it's, it's really been exciting what um, brands have been exploring. And um, one of our first clients that we had was actually with Heinz. And what they wanted to do was basically activate their most precious media, which is the ketchup bottle, right? And they wanted their consumers to know it went beyond just giving ketchup. So uh, the way you trigger AR is through an app. And in this case, I'm going to show examples through the Blipper app. But it can be through your own app as well. So I've opened it up. And this is just a tap into the visual recognition piece. It's picking up what you see around you. Again, if you point to a certain collateral that's activated with AR, so in this case, I'm just going to point to, you see instantly it's an interactive recipe book. So they wanted to show information beyond, you know, they wanted to show, well, what can you do with ketchup? What can you make with it? And here, you can basically get different content. You can watch videos on it, et cetera. So not only did we activate this AR experience, but we also saw engagement. How long did people spend on this ketchup bottle? Where, when? What content were they clicking on? So this was a whole new level of insights off of the, an actual physical touch point, which is something completely new for, for these brands. Another example um, in the beauty and fashion is we worked with um, Maybelline. So basically, they wanted to showcase their new nail polish line. And they had print ads. They had collateral in store. And with that, we thought, well, you know, going beyond just showing what nail polish is, why don't we actually let people virtually try on it? So here, and this was the, the collateral, the touch point. If you pointed to it, so you could see the AR coming to life. Here's your true color show. And then here. We thought, well, hey, let's have people be able to try it on. It's just loading right now. One second. Except it's not loading up right now, even though it did the previous times right before it started. But basically, um, I'd be able to take a picture of my hand, and then you'd um, be able to try on different colors instantly, which I think you saw a snippet in that video. Um, but what was really interesting was that, you know, again, going to the data and insights, you actually saw how long people spent on that one activation. And on average, it was about four and a half minutes, which is huge from an advertising perspective. And you know, out of all the colors that you can't see here, but it was 40 shades, 15%. One five actually tried on all 40 shades. And um, you know, it, we also had a breakdown of what colors were, were active. So really, again, very interesting insights for that brand, but also you know, the insights for their retailer. Um, another one, this was just more of an entertainment example, but really showing um, we worked with Star Wars, and they wanted to showcase their, their Star Wars Rebels movie. And across movie posters and other um, print ads, it was, this is more about AR gaming. So here, you see it come to life. So this is a nice AR part where, it's coming. again, the audio is not working, so you actually hear some really nice Star Wars music. Um, and then here, and apologies, it's sideways, but basically, you could start to get um, different characters and then start to play an interactive game. So here, and again, when you're on your mobile device, you just flip it sideways. But here, you can actually start going and shooting the droids that are in the air. And again, so this obviously, their part of their objectives was about um, driving up entertainment value for for their uh, moviegoers. So. You know, I just showed you certain examples across different industries, but if we hone in a bit more in recruiting, we have worked with different companies that have talked about, hey, how do I you know, bring more excitement to our company? How do we actually, what are more um, invigorating ways that we could try to attract talent, attract candidates, whether it is at events, whether it's across materials? And we have had certain companies um, you know, try, uh, uh, try out AR in different ways. So one example, um, so this was IBM. 
And here is their, um, again, they had collateral at events, they had posters, but basically it was about bringing your career to life. And they took one of their employees and wanted to uh, literally bring it to life with, it, with AR. So in this one, what they did was, there's a green screen of Sam who is talking and says, hi, welcome to my world. <laughs> This is, you know, I've been an, uh, an intern at IBM, but then now with, um, you know, learning more about it, I'm now doing this. Actually, it's good that they have the subtitles at the bottom, <laughs> since you can't hear. But um, so, you know, explaining he's a senior inventor, et cetera. And I can also just move it away, too. This is more of a tech feature where you don't have to hold still or double tap. You could see that over time, AR has evolved, and it's become more seamless and easy for people to use. So we explain that, and there's actually a competition to, um, the competition is over, but in one instance, too, you can actually take a virtual photo with Sam and the Globe and uh, you know, share it on social media, et cetera. Um, a lot of the AR features we have do tie into um, sharing mechanisms so that people can see how it works you know, and, and try it out, learning it via Twitter or Facebook, et cetera. Another example uh, is with Fidelity, and similarly, they wanted to basically capitalize on their recruiting process. And again, they um, picked an intern, and um, you know, it's just highlighting more about the Fidelity jobs and careers. So here, you can see this is Cassian, and um, I'm going to go back to the menu. And you can learn more about the careers. So, you know, if you already have digital content on the careers, this is such an easy way to make it another touch point and to activate it. So you could easily go to the Fidelity Careers website, again, go to um, different social media channels or video. But in this case, what Cassian did was explore and create an interactive tree, Fidelity tree, and you can learn more about um, the different internships available. You can just tap on it. Again, from a data perspective, we had interesting metrics around how long people spent on it, what did they tap through, what was the type of you know, um, career, internship, recruiting content that they were interested in. So just a few more examples. One that I, I did really like, but unfortunately it's not activated anymore just because it was a while ago, um, was basically Anheuser-Busch. So uh, we worked with them a lot from a branding marketing perspective with those teams, but the, um, the career and recruiting teams uh, slash internal training teams, again, they um, had a roadshow going on, going to different universities and wanting to um, you know, basically infuse AR to attract a lot of students with their Anheuser-Busch uh, jobs and internships. So what they did was they took interactive coasters your coasters, and they had it on display just at the booths, and people could just pick it up. They told people, you know, to download the app. Again, they used the Blipper app, but they could have used Anheuser-Busch's app. Download it, hold your phone up to it, and make it come to life. So the animation was a, their, um, you know, bird or their eagle flying out. But then what would happen, just visually showing you, is you'd um, be able to pick what state you're in, you're in and then what university. And depending on what university uh, you went to, it would show what specific um, program jobs were available for that school. So we did a lot of um, matching on, okay, if it's this university, um, here are the programs. And then they can learn more about it and apply to it. So it was a very interesting way to get students involved. Um, and then we also threw in a more uh, school spirit competition. So because they hit, I mean, I think it was like 50 different schools, uh, we actually showed a competition on which schools were most engaged with AR, and you saw like the top five, and um, it, was, it was actually quite um, interesting. And then from the data perspective, you saw on the heat map where people were scanning these uh, coasters and, you know, when. And, you know, it was interesting, too, because you saw, you know, like the time in which they were engaged at the actual event, the recruiting event, but then post that. And we saw people you know, engaging with this collateral like six days after they even saw an Anheuser-Busch recruiting rep. So it told them, hey, they're actually continuing, you know, they're interested in, in us um, um, throughout you know, a certain duration. So that was a really nice execution. And 
Again, a little while ago, this is an example with Hershey's. I, I just have a visual picture of it. But at a certain event, they had different pillars of their company and different themes. And across each one, they actually had iPads where you could go up and be able to um, learn more about the iconic brands, the people, et cetera. Um, really nice addition, especially when you have all this you know, space for posters. Um, how do you, you know, digitize uh, that? And then I guess along the themes too, it's just in general, we've executed a lot of event-based activations and it's, we've seen a lot of success with it. This was one done in Boston across certain classrooms, universities. They actually had a, um, like an, an inflatable house and you'd go around and be able to learn about different energy um, or consumption of energy across different products. That was so successful in one location, they spread it to other uh, schools and classrooms. Um, same thing with AOL, they wanted to do an event that featured um, the runner competition and just seeing certain AR activations off of the running it. But again, just from a um, display perspective, you could see that they made an interactive wall and you could point to it and get certain experiences from it. And then this one I just pulled, I thought it was interesting because um, you, know, you could use little trinkets or products, but in this case with Dakota Fashion at South by Southwest, they actually had little watches, but just having that watch was nothing. <laughs> It was only upon triggering it, um, pointing to it, you actually got an interactive experience learning about, more about Decoded, but also it, it essentially became like a smart watch where you get the interactive weather time among other information points. So I just showed you a bunch of examples, but there's really a lot more out there. Um, and I think you know the point is it's really up to you how you want to um, create the, the content. Um, you know, One question we get next then is, okay, so how do you execute this AR experience, right? And um, really, what's, you know, you're in a great position now, again, versus six years ago, because back then it was very limiting to how you could build it out. Um, there are many ways that you can do this. From our side, we, if you just with the first three, um, you know, we can custom build this whole AR experience for you, which means not only would we help build the AR experience, but it's also about the best practices. Because equally important to the actual AR campaign is, well, how are you going to promote this, right? What's the call to action? How will people be aware of this? What is the content? Who's the audience? And you find that these other non-AR factors are actually important to drive the success of the AR. Um, so we have a ton of learnings from that, which is a good reason why a lot of brands do still stick with us building it out. And then, of course, you have self-service tools. I know in the world out there now, there is easily AR Kit, AR Core. All these players are introducing tools. A lot of times servicing developers. Um, we do have our self-service tools for any general user, like you're myself, or developers. But you can build it out yourself. Um, you could try it out for free, or you know, again, you could build it out on your own with using our consult consultancy and, and, and guidance. And then, of course, to show the content, whether it's through the Blipper app or whether it's through your own app, it's up to you. And, Again, um, you know, I think now it's not as risk-taking to try AR. It's really easy, um, and there's many ways that people are using it. And you know, from our side, we can help guide you through. Um, as I mentioned throughout, it's it's also getting the insights, right? In this case, seeing how candidates or um, you know folks might be um, uh, engaging, you know, with your world. So I know my <laughs> I got the two-minute warning, but. That was pretty much it. Um, I think it's, it's a quite exciting world. Um, definitely let me know if you have questions about you know, Blipper or certain activations or just the AR ecosystem in general, because there was a lot of fun stuff happening in it. And that's awesome. Thank you.